Today, I am joined by the founder of Wealthy Owl. Can you start by introducing yourself and uh, perhaps saying where in the world you are and a little bit about yourself? My name is Shore. I am founder of Wealthy Owl. By education, I am an automotive engineer and by passion, I am an entrepreneur. I reside in New Delhi, India. Okay. Um, and uh, so we've been in contact a little bit over Twitter and you introduced me to Wealthy Owl. So, um, yeah, g- give me that, that kind of brief pitch. Uh, what is Wealthy Owl? Oh, Wealthy Owl is basically your personal wealth assistant. Okay, so if a uh, retail investor want to invest into cryptocurrencies, they don't know where to start their journey and how to, you know, capture these opportunities in the market. So the idea is to help them provide some assistance related to data and mm-hmm. um, like tracking the market, tracking the bearish cycle and tracking the bullish cycle so that they can capture these opportunities within the market with less time dedicated to the market. So they can enjoy their time and this product can help them grow their wealth as well. So that's the okay. whole idea. Okay. Great, very exciting. Um, and uh, how big uh, is Wealthy Hour? Is it yourself? Have you got a team? Where are you at uh, at the moment? Uh, right now, it's at the earliest stage. We are bootstrapped and we have a team of three people. I am working full time on it, and two of my friends they are working part time on it. Okay. And uh, you've answered my next question by saying bootstrapped. Uh, have you um, gone down the route of having any investment, or is it the three of you? Uh, right now we are taking the bootstrap route till we have some traction till we have like validate our idea in the market and then we will go for the investment so basically we are holding on right now we'll try out things and once we set the things in motion then we will go out and ask for investment okay Uh, and how long um so one of the things i'm trying to tease out we're speaking to like bubble app founders like yourself and and um and others that I, I've spoken to and we're speaking to uh, is um, is having actually launched a bubble app. Uh, like I work a lot with uh, people who have, have an idea and they're at different stages of, of getting used to the bubble and building out their app. So um, how long has, how long have you been building Wealthy Owl? Wealthy, sorry, uh, how long have you been building Wealthy Owl? Um, uh-huh. And uh, how long has it been launched for? Uh, I've, I've been working for like for past two months on mm-hmm. bubble and building it and we have launched our first beta version as on like two days back only so the beta okay. version is live right now and at current stage we offer like some data analysis and we are able to track the market on your behalf like you can track your prices you can set your target prices and you will get the notification once the market hits that level so mm-hmm. That much of we are able to build as of now, and we will continue to develop from here and iterate more from now. Okay. So we are working and like, yeah, yeah, go on, go on, go on, sorry. Okay, I was, I was just going to ask, um, like one of the, I think one of the challenges with um, either as an individual with a, with a, a small group of co-founders is, is you have that idea and then you think, oh, I can build this a bubble. Uh, and uh, that can almost be so much, uh, so exciting that um, the marketing plan or how you get those first users uh, that gets neglected. Um, so I, I appreciate that you're only a few days in having launched the beta. Do you mind just sharing a little bit of your plan of how you hope to get traction and users? Uh, basically, uh, right now we are working through three channels like Twitter, LinkedIn, and Reddit. Mm-hmm. So we are hanging around in the communities there, talking to people around like we are doing the things that don't scale right now. So sure. writing about it, talking about it, talking to potential users and, you know, figuring out how various channels work. So okay. if okay. like few things work, then we will double on it again and again. Yeah. So that's our yeah. market plan right now. Okay. Thank you. I mean, that's very much the bootstrap route, isn't it? To, uh, to validate an idea without having to chuck loads of cash at it. Um, Great, thank you. Um, what would you say? Um, like, how did you get started? Did you um, did you have a look at like traditional development? Did you look at other platforms? How did you end up developing a bubble? At initial stages, uh, we were thinking of the, developing it in a tr- more traditional way, but then I I was finding some dependencies. Like you know, some of my friends know coding. I I'm not a from coding background. 
my friends know mm-hmm. it so i was more of a dependent on them okay you need to do this for me or you know that's more of a kind of like a dependency then i thought okay let's end this thing and use the no code route so that i can build the thing much faster and try out the things much faster so i end up building on bubble okay and how long have you been how would you describe the the bubble learning curve from from first actually first of all how did you find bubble as a platform did you social media google search how did you first come across uh, it i think more often i get it from twitter most probably because okay i'm i'm all, always searching you know for the solution for my problem so i felt like this is one of the solution i can you know use it for my my okay. business journey yeah, that's, and product that's very interesting cuz i i get the perception that um like no code is a term it's quite a a bubble that that the joke intended like the I I always wonder how people discover no code and no code development to begin with if if they're not already you know using Zapier or, or Airtable uh, or anything like that. Um so so you got starting building a bubble how would you describe the learning curve um for like first signing up for the platform to being able to develop the features and and the web app that you wanted? Uh the learning curve is quite a bit of a journey itself like you know few things you can learn from some forum some and at sometimes you have to be creative you have to find a solution like an engineer like <laughs> uh, like uh, you want to do some back end workflows and you don't know how to do it so you need to find some creative way out of doing it like in bubble there is some limitations and some flexibility so you have to exploit those things so at times it's a bit demanding that you have to develop some creative route out of the thing and sometimes it is way too easy so i started with learning with you know watching youtube videos and mm-hmm. following some developers on the platform itself and get, getting some help from them and over the time i, I was iterating the things as well so great yeah it sounds is that's the route that i find myself encouraging um others to take the most is uh you, you you learn by building and when you find something you get stuck on you you just you know the you have like the top 3 places that you look for an answer and and hope that you find an answer there um so that that's really helpful thank you um what would you say is the uh the biggest thing you love about building uh your startup with bubble the biggest thing i love about is the speed of execution like you can test a one feature a night before and you can put it to the live next day like you can actually test it with live audience very fast so the speed of execution is yeah very like exponential so you can you know you don't need a designer to design something for you then you will try out the test few things you can just you know build it and test it with the live users very fast so yeah that's the, yeah, yeah okay um, then what would you say are the main limitations you've experienced with bubble uh some of the limitations i experienced with bubble is uh considering the database like in my case particularly uh i want to store some numbers in db which is like provided by the bubble the database mm-hmm. provided by the bubble so i can't store the number with a precision value like you can store the number but it has to be like i want it to have a four places of decimal i can't define it in the db itself so at times oh, I, okay. i at times i have to use air table for precision things okay so like if i want because i am dealing with prices and you know prices can go up to four digit of decimal uh, up like 0.744000 dollars so these very precise data i need to collect and i need to you know do some calculation over those things so that's the issue i faced personally that i can't store that number with very precise value like i, I can't define that number of decimals in it right now while storing it in the db you, so yeah and you found the the work around is to use uh, the the air table api yeah, because yeah. Okay, I wasn't aware. It's not I can 100% see why prices especially with crypto and the number of decimal places you need to store um is vital to your app. I wasn't aware that Bubble had a an issue with 
decimal numbers, but it sounds like something you've had to overcome. Yeah, actually, uh, that's my like, if you have to compare two prices and, you know, it's in decimal four places, then like 0 0.07455 and 0 0.07466. So this is a difference. This, this has closed the level. So you need to be precise up to that four levels of decimal. And if you can't yeah. do it with the DB, then it's a problem for me. So, right. okay. I, I, you've, you've taught me something there. It's not, uh, I've never had to deal with numbers in so much detail, so many decimal places that, um, so, um, do, do, what other challenges, uh, it, it kind of speaking to, uh, to other people who are starting out on bubble or who are in like this very early days of, of launching a product. Um, what would you say the challenges you are facing and, uh, and yeah, what, what do you think the biggest challenges are for, for people in that uh, position like you? I think uh, if someone starting their bubble journey, they should build, uh, keeping the responsive engine in mind from the first day. If you are not building the pages with the responsive engine in mind, you have to do a lot of rework. <laughs> and, you know, you can't, uh, like you use the fixed layout and it's good for the desktop, but it will yeah. be the worst page on the mobile. So, you know, that's an issue. So start building it with the responsive engine in the mind from first day itself. So it will save you ton of rework and time as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's a really good piece of advice there. Um, I, I'd certainly love to echo that, that, uh, uh, what I, I've worked with, with, uh, students coaching them and, uh, had to break that news to them that using fixed layout everywhere is it, they have to change it. Otherwise it's going to cause loads of headaches later on. So they might as well do it now.